Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, bettingangle.us. Both free sites. It's Friday, December the 14th, 2018. Let's talk boxing, including heavyweight boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I need help from you, the boxing fan. Right? You see this gray here. I'm an old timer. I go back to the 1970s in terms of watching boxing. I've looked at a lot of guys on the way up. Right? I've looked at guys at the top on the way down. Now, I just don't understand, and maybe this new generation can explain it to me, right? The people the same age as Anthony Joshua, the people the same age as Saul Alvarez, maybe you can explain to me exactly what's going on, right? The world just saw a heavyweight title fight. Right? I know Joshua's people are trying to say, what's the lineal champion? As if they've never heard of the term. As if the term doesn't predate them. As if fans aren't interested in the man who beat the man who beat the man. Right? Okay, I understand the Joshua people don't know what a lineal champ is. But whether you believe in lineal championships or not, the world just saw a heavyweight title fight where Tyson Fury undressed Deontay Wilder. Folks, the undressing is so bad that Wilder's sanctioning body, the WBC, has said, hey, we want an immediate rematch. Right? Think it through. Well, incredibly, I'll just say this. Back in the day, and that wasn't that long ago, let's go back to Vitaly Klitschko. Derek Chisora fought Robert Hellenius, got jobbed on the decision. The champ at the time was a guy named Vitaly Klitschko. This is just a few years ago. Chisora is still fighting. Hellenius is still fighting. And the champ decided he was going to fight Derek Chisora, because he knew that the judges were crazy in that Hellenius fight. He knew that the real winner was Derek Chisora. He knew that you, the fan, thought Derek Chisora had gotten ripped off. So, of course, Vitaly fought Chisora, and Chisora, quite frankly, did very well. Right, went the distance, got inside on Vitaly Klitschko. It was actually one of Vitaly's more challenging fights. Now, let me just say, Vitaly Klitschko's still around. I want the boxing press to be more aggressive. When a young champion like an Anthony Joshua says, hey, I want to fight Deontay Wilder next, the guy we saw get publicly undressed. I want the boxing press to go to Vitaly Klitschko and say, champ, who do you think won the Fury Wilder fight? Why do you think Joshua wants to fight Wilder and not Fury next? I want the boxing press when Anthony Joshua is around town or in the gym to yell at Joshua and say, hey, didn't you think Fury beat Deontay Wilder? Folks, these, these questions aren't that hard. If Joshua says anything other than, no, I thought Wilder won, which in my opinion would discredit his opinion. If Joshua says anything like, oh, I didn't watch the fight, that's not credible. If he says Tyson Fury won the fight, then the next question should be, so why do you want to fight Deontay Wilder instead? Understand the line, oh, Fury doesn't have a title, doesn't hold water because Joshua has multiple titles. 
You're the heavyweight champion of the world. Do you need to be fighting guys with other titles at this stage? Isn't the whole point to say to the world, I'm the best and I'm going to continue to prove it to you. Just like Vitaly Klitschko did when Derek Chisora got robbed against Robert Hellenius, Vitaly said, hey, I'm the champ and I want to fight the best. So I'm going to go by what the people say. Well, now we get even more ridiculousness in boxing. And it's sad because Josh was a guy who fought the tough fights on the way up. Right? He fights Vladimir Klitschko. He fights unbeaten Joseph Parker. I don't understand how with all that goodwill, the guy would be putting on this clown show, and that's what it is. This clown show saying, I want to fight the guy who y'all just saw lost to Tyson Fury. Right? That's ridiculous. Let me also say, too, it's so ridiculous that Joshua is criticizing Deontay Wilder for being more interested in fighting Tyson Fury. Folks, who just embarrassed Deontay Wilder? I have the utmost respect for a fighter who says, well, you know, people think I got undressed in that fight. Me and this guy, the guy who did the undressing, have unfinished business. I want the rematch. Folks, I understand that completely. What I don't understand is the length to which Joshua is trying to ignore Tyson Fury. Folks, Lennox Lewis has said, hey, I thought Tyson Fury won the fight. Frank Bruno has said, hey, I think Tyson Fury won the fight. These are elder statesmen in British boxing. Joshua needs to rethink this one. Understand the fighter is boss. If the promoters are feeding you lines and stuff like that, just know you look awfully foolish in public saying them. Right? Fighters need to start to realize, hey, I have a reputation. I wouldn't even mind if Joshua did a Canelo and said, you know what, I'll fight Fury in the fall. Let me have one fight before that, right? He has mandatories. He has multiple belts. We, the boxing public, would go for that. Of course, that'd be damn dangerous because the more time you give Tyson Fury to get in better shape, to get in boxing shape, the more dangerous he's going to be. Well, let me say this. Now we have Anthony Joshua Redux. You have Saul Alvarez. One of the things I've always admired about Saul Alvarez is the quality of his opponents. Right? This is a guy taking on a level competition. Right? You want the middleweight title? You fight Golovkin twice. Right? I'm impressed by this guy. You want to prove to us that you're the best in the sport pound for pound? You fight Floyd Mayweather. Right? It's taken Canelo years to build up this reputation. I'm shocked he's fighting Rocky Fielding. Bold move, right? He's the middleweight champ. He says, you know what? This isn't good enough. I want the super middleweight belt. The guy who just won it, come on down. You know, let's get after it. Okay, fine. But what I don't understand, and I'm a DAZN subscriber, right? I'm paying my $9.99 a month. I heard Canelo was in the fold. I said, okay, you know, I know how Canelo operates, right? You know, Mayweather, Cotto, uh, Golovkin, um, you know, I'm expecting big fights. Now, now I'm hearing that Canelo, whatever happens in that Rocky Fielding fight, is going to leave 168 and he's going to come back to 160. 
So, of course, I'm thinking, okay, great. He has unfinished business, in my opinion, with Golovkin. If he's not going to fight Golovkin, then it better be Danny Jacobs, right? Who just picked up a share of a middleweight title after beating Dariyevchenko, right? Who was unbeaten. So you're thinking, okay, who are the biggest names in middleweight? How am I going to get the value of my money by subscribing the, to the zone? You know it's Canelo. You're thinking to yourself, oh, this has got to be a big A-plus fight coming up. Right? Keep in mind, too, Canelo has other options. Guys like Callum Smith are calling him out. In other words, people are lining up in more than one weight class to fight Canelo. So, of course, Oscar De La Hoya, Hall of Fame fighter. Whatever you think of Oscar, give him that. Oscar De La Hoya, of course, is talking to the press. Canelo has reserved a date. <laughs> right? A date, it, you know, just like Anthony Joshua. This is literally the Joshua playbook. Canelo leaned over to Anthony and said, hey, let me, let me borrow a few pages here. Canelo has reserved a day. So, of course, and it's months away. So, you know the rest. I'm guessing that if Golovkin was eating in a restaurant and they came to him and said, hey, Canelo wants to fight you next, he'd put down the fork, he would hop on the phone with Abel Sanchez, he'd say, hey, we got to get to work. Then he would leave the restaurant to start training. Right? Danny Jacobs is a guy who takes on all comers, right? Kid Chocolate. Golovkin. Danny Jacobs wants to fight Canelo. I'm guessing if Danny Jacobs was waiting for a cab in New York City and someone said, hey, Canelo wants to fight you. Danny Jacobs would get in the cab and tell the cab driver, take me to the gym. Right? These are champion guys who want to fight the best. Instead, Oscar De La Hoya tells the press that he doesn't know who Canelo's going to fight. But then he goes further and he says it's not going to be Golovkin or Danny Jacobs. What's the deal? Does Danny Jacobs have bad breath or something? I thought the zone was going to hit us between the eyes with some great fights. Who's Canelo going to fight? Tom Dick or Harry? I'm hearing David Lemieux, who, believe it or not, happens to be associated with Golden Boy, right? Oscar De La Hoya's organization. Apparently, David Lemieux, who's already been destroyed by Golovkin is in the queue. Does, does somebody think that David Lemieux is a more attractive opponent than Danny Jacobs or Golovkin? Folks, I'm, I'm astonished. I, this must be a new generational thing. Back in the day, you know, think about Just Ali. Just Ali. Trilogy with Joe Fraser. Right? Two fights with Sonny Liston. Trilogy with Ken Norton. Right? He even fought Leon Spinks twice. You know, back in the day, guys wanted to fight you multiple times. Joe Fraser gets blown out by George Foreman. Joe fought him again. Right? Think about Riddick Bowe and Evander Holifield. Spectacular first fight. They fought again. That's when you have the fan man fight. Riddick Bo was complaining about his flow being disrupted. So they fought a third time. Right? I don't I don't understand what's happening today where guys who have built reputations for fighting difficult fights have suddenly decided that they're not only going to dodge guys 
they're going to openly tell you they're dodging the guy. Right? Ali never fought Foreman again. But Ali wasn't going around saying, you know what, I'm not fighting George Foreman again. That would have been viewed as cowardly in the 1970s. How does that come to pass today where guys are showing up and they're saying, hey, you know what, my guy's not going to fight Golovkin <laughs> or Danny Jacobs. Right? It's ridiculous. Let me also say, too, age is a factor. Canelo's in his late 20s. Golovkin's well into his 30s. Folks, can we see the third fight before Golovkin collects Social Security? Isn't this delay ridiculous? So here, let me just say this. Let me make a suggestion here. You're Anthony Joshua. Even David Hay is saying, look, you need to fight Fury. <laughs> In other words, you have an A-plus group of British fighters, right? Guys who've all held the belt, who all realize that the obvious next fight for Anthony Joshua is against Tyson Fury. Okay, now, if you're Anthony Joshua and you don't want to fight Tyson Fury, let me name another former champ who would make a brilliant match, right? I have... Never in my life seen Vladimir Klitschko out of shape. Vladimir Klitschko wants to come back. Reports have him texting Anthony Joshua saying, hey, I want to come back. Right? Understand, he's texting Joshua because he wants to come back for Joshua. He wants Joshua's titles. Now, if you're Anthony Joshua... Give the fans what they want. If you're not going to fight Tyson Fury, how about pivoting and giving us the rematch of your epic first fight? Folks, it's not like Anthony Joshua blew out Vladimir Klitschko in their first fight. That fight goes 11 rounds. Joshua's on the canvas in that fight. That was a great fight. Let me also say, too, we just got a hell of a comeback to the sport from Tyson Fury. Could you imagine the Vladimir Klitschko comeback if Klitschko beats Joshua? At that point, Klitschko is looking at huge fights. The third fight against Anthony Joshua. Assuming he doesn't do a Canelo and have his promoter show up and say, nah, He's going to fight again, but it's not going to be against Anthony Joshua or Tyson Fury, right? Think about it. Vladimir Klitschko could say, look, Joshua, you and I have unfinished business. At this point, the belts are academic, aren't they? Both guys will have had several heavyweight title belts, right? It would be more about legacy. Vladimir Klitschko's in his 40s now. Right? If some sanctioning body says, hey, if you fight Joshua again, we're going to strip you. Vladimir Klitschko should say, go ahead and strip me. I've been champ. <laughs> I know what that's like. People already see that line on my resume. Now, if he doesn't fight Joshua again, this is if he beats Joshua. I'm not saying that's a done deal. That's a tough fight. But let's say he beats Joshua. Then he could pivot to the man who took his title, Tyson Fury. We, the boxing fans, would be treated to a great spectacle in boxing's marquee division, the heavyweight division. Right? As for Canelo, let me say this. Canelo certainly has fought the tough fights. I tip my hat to him. I'm not sure he gets by Rocky Fielding. My money's on Fielding in that fight, given the odds. Right? But, if he's going to reserve a date, if he's going to have his promoter talking about that date, then we better hear names like Golovkin, Danny Jacobs, 
Callum Smith, right, James DeGale. We need to hear some big names. You can't be the poster boy for a new boxing subscription service and then introduce yourself to subscribers by fighting David Lemieux. Right? I mean, <laughs> doesn't make sense to me. Right? One man's opinion. Let me also say, too, that I believe to many fans what I'm saying in this video is really self-evident. Right? Hey, Anthony Joshua, consider fighting, <laughs> consider fighting the guy, Lennox Lewis, uh, Frank Bruno, believe, just beat Deontay Wilder. Right? Consider fighting the lineal heavyweight champion. You know, that's a common sense point of view. Somehow it's not ruling the day in boxing today. Right? Canelo, you would think someone would say, hey, Canelo, people are hot and bothered over your fights with Golovkin. Right? There's a sizable group out there who believe you lost both fights. Right? Why don't you remove the doubt by having a third fight? If the zone is paying you $365 million for the deal, right? The long term deal with the zone, this would be one hell of a way to christen the service, right? Somehow that just seems to make too much sense. That's not the direction they're going. And understand the direction they're going doesn't pivot off Golovkin to Danny Jacobs. No, it pivots further, right? The way boxing's going today, I'm surprised Canelo's not saying, hey, we're going to fight Deryavchenko, the guy Danny Jacobs beat, right? Isn't that... Isn't that really what Anthony Josh was doing at heavyweight? Right? All these guys think Tyson Fury won the fight. I'm going to fight the guy who they believe Tyson Fury just beat. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I do hope millennials in the comment section of this video tell us exactly what's going on. Why fighters with reputations for taking tough fights are suddenly actively ignoring people like the lineal heavyweight champion, the former unbeaten middleweight champion before this last decision, Golovkin, and one of the other reigning middleweight champions, he's reigning right now, folks, Danny Jacobs. Right? Tell us why these guys are being treated like the help and don't seem to be in the running for title fights. Right? I thought Fury was unbeaten. Am I, am I wrong about that? Let me hear from you. Let's hope if Joshua doesn't fight Wilder or Fury. Let's hope he pivots and says, hey, Vladimir Klitschko, welcome back to the sport. Let's have at it. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Happy Friday. Happy weekend. Thanks for stopping by.